Oh, right, right, right. I actually, I saw this floating around on Twitter. I started it and didn't finish it. But from what I understand, the core of the argument is the channel, and I always get the name wrong, so I'm not going to bother, but the channel I've been a fan of for a while is apparently funded by billionaires. <clears throat> so they're making the argument that they do less... What's the right way of phrasing it? They do content that favors their investors' perspective and their interests, as opposed to more just factual and unbiased looks at topics. But then I saw that it mainly boiled down to a lot of the things they call out is their optimism when it comes to things, which I think is a really weird argument to make. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with taking a, a sad topic or like a scary topic and trying to find an optimistic explanation for how we could conquer it or what it could mean or how it could be improved. I don't really understand. I haven't watched it, so maybe the video is a little more nuanced than that, but that's what I've seen the whole discourse on Twitter about. Thanks for five gift subs. Osmosis and the Resub Chicken, Jose and Baron and the Bits Kirsch. In November 2016, Kurt Zizak published a video on the most gruesome parasites. It tells a story of devastating diseases that the world governments couldn't solve. So the big pharma stepped in to be the hero of humanity and save the day. It's one of those two good to be true stories, so I decided to look it up myself. And the <clears> real <throat> events are nowhere near as glaring for the big pharma as Curtis Act presents. Pharmaceutical corporations did donate their medicine to the most affected regions, but they didn't do it out of their own volition or initiative. They did it after decades of neglecting the diseases because they weren't profitable enough to manufacture fixes for them. Bill Gates is actually responsible for much of the neglect. His charitable priorities overemphasized big name diseases such as malaria, HIV, or tuberculosis. But in the process of doing so, they drew crucial attention and resources away from more common and structural problems. That's not super surprising to hear at all. I, I haven't seen the video that he's talking about here, though. That, that, that absolutely sounds par for the course. That goes for everything. They're not going to pursue something that they can't make a profit on. That's the sad reality of it. I don't know if anyone ever looks at pharmaceutical companies or anyone that's making medicine as some benevolent saints that just want to save the world. So that's not surprising. I, maybe the video is making the argument that the, the drug companies are heroes and saviors that just wanted to push us t to salvation. Maybe, but I, I highly doubt that's what it was many of which led to outbreaks of other diseases. After the public pressure was too large to ignore, the drug makers decided to join the plan. Big Pharma never came up with this initiative. It was the World Health Organization who had proposed a roadmap to eradicate the diseases by 2020 and convinced governments Just look and at insulin. NGOs to join Great example. Though pharmaceutical conglomerates never assumed any risk, these corporations took home almost $9 trillion in profits in 18 years. So Oof. this little stunt is really just a pocket change for them. Big this clams. video was paid for by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and it so happens that the Gates are heavily invested in many of the pharma companies Curtis are portrays as heroes. They own major holdings in many of the participating companies. Do, does the channel ever portray them as heroes, though? Of the ones I've seen where he does mention pharma or where they do mention pharmaceutical companies, I never really got the impression that he like puts them on some pedestal as heroes. More so, just looking at what they did and how it affected it or changed it. Okay, so it's not just me. I never got that impression. It just really seemed more matter-of-fact, like... And, again, they did actually step in and do things. It, I, from everything I ever saw from the channel, it was just like, they stepped in and they did this. And then they just have, like, a cutesy animation associated with it. I never really got the impression that they were trying to suck the dick of the pharmaceutical companies. But, again, I guess it could just be me. 
I always thought they were a bit bleak sometimes on their outlook, but not much else. So th that's interesting because usually the takeaway and what a lot of this boils down to is they don't look at things bleak. They look at things highly optimistic. And since they do receive funding from, I guess, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that optimism could be more as like a propaganda tool where it's trying to put all of their interests in the best light. So that's where it all kind of stems from. Most people don't find it bleak. Actually, the opposite. And both Bill and Melinda Gates are trustees of two pharma firms. This video isn't positive news. It's a positive PR. Kirkzak admitted they wouldn't have made this video if it wasn't paid for by Gates. Okay, what the hell just happened? Well, let me read that. Kind of glossed over that pretty quick. What I can say for us is the best case scenario, the foundation people have been nothing but hands off, probably would not have made the horrible parasites video without the grant, for example. But honestly, it was an awesome creative challenge and one of the favorite videos we've made so far. Okay. Okay, what the hell just happened? This one video is the perfect culmination of everything that's wrong with billionaires funding media to get the coverage they need. It provides a whitewashed take on real events, it undeservedly elevates the role of private entities, and gives a marketing boost to their agenda and financial interests. The ultra-wealthy are pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into media companies, academic institutions, True. and governing bodies to rig every step of policymaking in their favor. When billionaires want to open up the markets for their trade, they'll fund media outlets that tell the audience how important investments, innovations, and economic growth are. They'll donate to research that will give them the argument that whatever they decide to do is science. They'll give to political campaigns to get the right candidates elected so that the laws they lobby for are easier to pass. We have identified this to be a problem all true. with all big institutions, and this is what it did to our trust in them. But how does that tie in to the YouTuber? So if it is a problem when billionaires fund our politicians, our journalists, and our academia, is it also a problem when they fund our YouTubers? Because billionaire funding is a lot more prevalent on YouTube than you might think. It's far beyond the scope of this one six-year-old video. I didn't realize I was watching a video sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation because Kirkzak didn't reveal this information until the last 20 seconds of the video. I well, I imagine it's in the description though, right? It'd be illegal. You have to make it very, like one of the main things, you have to make it very clear that it's a sponsored video. Interesting. It's not immediately clear. It's not in in the description here. So was this video... Oh, hold on, let me see. Why don't I just see for myself where it comes in and how. Remember that from time to time. This video was made possible in part by a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and your support on Patreon.com. Okay, so it's not per se a sponsored video, but I can see where this would easily be a bit uh, yucky. Where a grant did help fund this video and the information paints the things that this is involved in in a very positive way. But I guess it's not per se a sponsored video. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and your support on Patreon.com. If you want to help us make more videos, you can do so here. If you're disappointed... That's very interesting. What does it matter? Well, what do you mean, what does it matter? Let's say I'm paying Kotaku to po post an article about... Jesus Christ, a, a mobile game that I've made. And I'm like, hey, maybe just look at the mobile game and talk about... You know, some cool features that we're thinking about. You know, talk about mobile gaming in general, but I'd like you to talk a little bit about my game when talking about, like, these innovative features. And it's not mentioned till the end that my input or my money helped write that article. 
It's a really bad example. That's actually a terrible example. Because this is a grant, not a direct contribution, I suppose. What's a better way of explaining it? Now you know what, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to stand on that. It, I think the concept should be pretty clear. If you are getting money, or if you have money come in, and you make a video that kind of paints everything where that money came from in a positive way, it seems a bit less than genuine. It seems like perhaps that financial incentive may have skewed some information in order to make it more favorable to the person or the group where the money came from. That's, that's why, like, if a review is sponsored, everyone takes the review less seriously because it's like, oh, you're probably not going to say anything overly harsh because you had money come in from that company. Isn't that what you do, though? What, pay Kotaku to talk about my mobile game that I don't have? What? Thanks for your subscription. I still don't think it's a big deal. Well, I don't know if it's a big deal yet. I haven't finished the video. But I could see, like, at least the argument for it. Where if they're getting money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and a lot of the things they talk about paint everything that this foundation does in a positive light, without addressing, like, any kind of negative stuff, that seems a little odd, as if it's been influenced by the money. Seems more ulterior motive driven, which I think is kind of the core of where this comes from. Calling it a propaganda machine for billionaires. I actually first found out about the sponsorship from Kurtzak Medium article on how they treat sponsors. Here, Philip Detmer, the owner of the channel, admitted that Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was their biggest supporter. So big, in fact, it helped transform Kurtzak into a powerhouse. But Philip Detmer also told us that Kurtzak is almost entirely viewer funded. I wanted to know where the truth lies, so I went to the Foundation's grant database and found this. In November 2015, Kurtzak was awarded $570,000 from Oof. the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for a 49 month long contract. I wanted to see the full extent of this contract, so I started going through their YouTube videos to see how many were made for the Foundation. And that's when I entered a rabbit hole. I was able to identify at least 8 videos Kurtzak made for the Gates Foundation. When they were awarded the Gates Grant... Is it for the Gates Foundation? I don't... Th I, I don't think so. I've seen some of these. I, I never got the impression they were for anyone, aside from just bringing light to a topic. When they were awarded the Gates Grant, the Patreon was relatively small, yielding less than $9,000 per month. The money from Gates was That's covered at least $11,000 per month, or $71,250 per video. So the Gates money alone would be at least on par with their Patreon, but Gates wasn't alone. Throughout my research, I kept discovering more and more billionaire-sponsored videos. It's not just one foundation. It's George Soros, The Templetons, and Facebook co-founder Dustin Moskowitz. They also made a sponsored video for this professor from Oxford University, William McCaskill, who is funded by Open Philanthropy. And Chris Zad also received money from Bill Gates' personal blog and venture capitalist funds. From what I was able to find, Kurt Zad made at least one video for Open Society Foundations, at least three videos for Templeton World Charity, three videos for Bill Gates' blog and Breakthrough Energy, and one video for William McCaskill. He keeps saying made the, made the videos for them. But in, in none of these videos does it promote anything. At least not that I can recall from the ones I've seen. Thanks, the resub freak. And it doesn't really... It doesn't really say anything too much either about, like, the actual... I don't know, players in the story. Though I guess if you look at the animation, for example, when it had, like, free drug... Uh, ribbon stamped on one of the things and the doctor giving like a thumbs up I guess you could interpret that as like a wow this is an incredible company and they're fucking heroes I could I could maybe see that but I feel like that's just more because the audience is all over the place in terms of age so that kind of animation is going to resonate and make it clear to everyone like what's going on as opposed to it be more like a patting on the ass and a celebration I 
on the very end of all of them, he says who it was funded by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I just learned. Usually, when it comes to a sponsored video, you have to make it abundantly clear that it is sponsored, which is why at the top of the, the top of every description that's sponsored, it has the sponsor. This, the grant to Bill and Melinda's Gate, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is not even in the description. It's in the last 20 seconds, where most people have probably already clicked off. Because it's not technically sponsored. They have funding from the foundation, but they didn't sponsor this video. They just have money from the grant, and that money helped create this video. But they didn't make it for them, technically. We know they were awarded half a million from the Gates Foundation and almost six million from Open Philanthropy. If they kept the same per video Jesus rate the Gates grant, it could be estimated Kurt Zak received at six least mil. seven million from billionaire funds. This would be more money than Kurt Zak received from their supporters on Patreon in the entire history of the channel. This made me realize that Kurt Zak never was this small, independent, almost entirely viewer-funded channel. As soon as the studio incorporated, billionaires began lining up. They transformed the small Munich-based design studio with five employees into a multi-million dollar media powerhouse with dozens of employees. Kurtz's Act was also sponsored by regular commercial businesses such as Brilliant or Skillshare, but neither of these has multi-billion dollar investments in global industries and they aren't spending millions in political lobbies trying to influence lawmaking. And most importantly, they don't fund the sources that Kurtz's Act uses for the research. And what the hell is going on with Kurtz's Act research? Kurt Zak told us their research is impartial and fact-checked by scientists to ensure integrity. But my skepticism alarms were already buzzing out of their asses, so I started looking at their sources and noticed something odd. Many of their videos rely primarily on a single publication. This publication is a partner of the channel and they help them with research and provide numbers for their scripts. This publication appears so frequently in their sources, their website is quoted up to dozens of times in a single document. This research publication is not some independent group of scientists just sharing their hard science for free. It is our role in data, heavily funded by Bill Gates and other billionaires, many of which have also sponsored Kurt Zak videos. The publication received- Okay, I will, I will say, probably shouldn't just be using one source for everything this frequently. That's a, you know, that's, that, I think that's a very fair point. I, I think you should probably get information from more than just one source. Especially because it's, again, I think this still is going to boil down to more of like, instead of it being cause, like more correlation as opposed to causation. But this certainly is just at the very least laziness to keep using the same source for all of this information. And that source also happens to be funded by your grant. That's uh, not not amazing. Is it Prime? Kuro in the resub god tier. Stop spreading this conspiracy bullshit. Well, it's not really a conspiracy. They haven't made any claims aside from like the factual stuff of they have the grants, which they openly talk about. It's at the end of the videos. And they also use one source a lot. What's the conspiracy? That's just factual. Is your resub Cubone? The hated one is the hated one channel is all about conspiracy. Could be, but so far he hasn't said anything conspiratorial. He's just pointing out things that I do think are a little less than stellar. This should be at the beginning of the video, or at the very least in the description. When a video is at least partially funded by an organization, I think that should be mentioned as opposed to the last 20 seconds for the sake of transparency and to play by the standard actual rules of sponsored stuff. I get that it's not technically a sponsor, but at the very least you should disclose it and make it clear to everyone. I don't think that's good practice from them there. But right now all he's doing is pointing out a lot of their funding comes from that these grants and these VCs and also using this one source which is also funded by one of their 
investors. Funded by billionaires, we get it, but where's the pro-billionaire propaganda? That's what I'm saying. And from what I've read, it boils down to he's very, or the channel's very optimistic when it comes to the bleak topics, which they're painting is it sucking the dick of their investors, which again is an impression I never got when watching the content. So I'm curious to see what argument he makes for that. Grants in a paid sponsorship are very different. They're kind of different. I, I, I won't give you very different. At the end of the day, you got money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let's say you wanted to make a video. Let's say this channel wanted to make a video on malaria. And they start talking about things that make the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation look bad. They probably wouldn't get that. They, they probably wouldn't be favorable with this anymore. So they probably wouldn't talk about anything that makes them look bad. That's where there's a problem. Whether it's a sponsor, whether it's a grant, it still kind of makes it more hesitant to tackle something that might paint this in a bad light. Is it, yeah, it just becomes kind of a conflict of interest. You receive this money from this foundation, you're probably going to avoid any of the topics that make that foundation look bad. But it's all speculative at best. But you just keep moving the goalposts. It, it, it's not speculative to say that this money came from them because they have openly stated that they did get grants and this money was, or these videos were partially funded by the foundation and their grant. That's not speculative. What is speculative is whether or not it's pro billionaire propaganda they're peddling. Which I have not been convinced on in the slightest yet. at least $4.8 million from the Gates Foundation alone, but they were also funded by Open Philanthropy, Templeton, and William McCaskill. All of these entities had their series of sponsored videos at their Kirk's Act channel. Their partnership with Our World in Data was initiated by the grant from the Gates Foundation through the first video on overpopulation, made in collaboration with Max Roser, the founder and lead scientist of Our World in Data. Following this money trail led me to discover that the data in Chris's Act videos isn't such a rock-solid science as they authoritatively present in their videos. Many of the numbers from our world in data Chris's Act relies on so much are complete garbage. In the videos on overpopulation, they According show this amazing decline in global poverty, a trend which they attribute to economic growth. But where is this data coming from? It's from Max Roser's graph at Our World in Data. But look at how the data points go all the way back to the early 19th century. None of these historical numbers are proven. Real data on poverty for the majority of the world didn't exist until 1981. Anything before that is a speculation. And who defines extreme poverty? The World Bank does. How? By calculating the lowest possible rate as an average from poverty lines of the poorest countries in the world. That's living below $1.90 a day. Scholars strongly disagree with this rate and suggest at least $7.40 a day. With the World Bank's rate, billions of people that are extremely poor according to their national poverty lines end up in lower middle income regions, which is what makes the graph look like this instead of this if we use the $7.40 line or this if we leave out China. So not a dramatic decline at all, but an increase, actually, or a stagnation at best, since 1981. There's also half of the world's population mm. suffering from hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition, more than 40 million modern slaves, and the ever-widening income gap between the richest and the poor. So really hard to come to an optimistic conclusion that poverty is somehow on the decline. But I just can't chalk that up to it necessarily being like propaganda. That could very well, once again, just be a more optimistic look at a very bleak subject. And I, I've seen that video. I just didn't get the impression that it was... I, it, it just feels like optimism equal propaganda. What does this have to do? The point he's making is the data they present paints a much prettier picture than the real data. Because they're using the $1.90 a day model, which makes it look like it's declining... But that's not what a lot of people seem to agree on. Most people seem to agree that the 740 is the poverty line, and using that data, it's actually been increasing. So it's right now it's being accused of trying to paint it as a declining thing when it's really not. 
That's the point they're making. But that just doesn't seem malicious. Like, it just really seems like that's still a pretty fair metric overall. But it... And it's a more optimistic look at it, but it doesn't seem like it's coming from a place of trying to be... It doesn't seem like it's coming from a place of just trying to suck up to the people that give them the money. False information, though, in general? I wouldn't... It's not false. The information itself isn't wrong, but it's using a metric that not everyone agrees on. So it's using, it's using a different metric than what other people seem to prefer. But that doesn't mean it's false. It could be manipulative, though, to paint the narrative in a different way than the reality. But I still don't even know if I fully agree with that take on it either. I'd have to rewatch the video to see exactly what arguments are being made. Thanks to Resub GV and the Prime Chaos. Another thing that I read, and we haven't gotten to it in the video, but in here he brings up a study from September of 2020 to, criti to critique a video that um, Kurtz... I will never get that name right but to critique a video that they made back in June of 2020. So in September of 2020, new information came out that made the video published in June 2020 less accurate. And he holds that against them as if they were somehow supposed to predict the future. And I don't think that's necessarily a fair criticism. Painting a different picture than reality isn't being optimistic as propaganda. Well, I'm not saying it's painting a different picture. That's the argument. I... Again, it's a metric that people are disagreeing on with the level. Is it $1.90 a day or $7.40? I guess depending on where you're going to get your information from or who you're going to talk to, they're going to give you something different. So it just depends on where you think that number should be. The information's not wrong, but they paint two very different pictures depending on how you look at it. Is it tier one here come? It's misleading to use that data. But based on what? Maybe it's misleading for the people saying 740. I don't know. I'm not knowledgeable enough on the topic. Maybe the $1.90 is actually the more accepted one, but 740 is something that the hated one cherry-picked, where he found a couple articles where people agree it should be 740. We have no... I have no way of knowing. I'm not knowledgeable enough. You can do this for every piece of data ever. Because I could also say, I think the poverty line is anything under $15 a day. And then this would paint an entirely different graph. I don't know what the right metric is. But it is a conclusion touted by Bill Gates, who also paid for this video to be made. As the economist Max Roser has said, The world has done quite well on this. The newspapers could have run a headline. The lives of the poor will improve more in the next 15 years than at any other time in history. Number of people in poverty fell by 137,000 since yesterday. It comes out as a what for many people will be a stunningly positive story. Many videos made in partnership <coughs> with our world in data can be dissected like this. Look at the numbers on historical emissions from the video on who is responsible for climate change. Where are these numbers coming from? Our role in data, of course, but that's just one source that conveniently downplays the role of the developed countries in climate change. According to a paper from Lancet, funded by no one, the US is responsible not for 25% of emissions, but 40%. The EU is responsible for 29% instead of 22 G8 emitted Is this the one that came out in September of 2020? Because this is the one I might have just been talking about. Yeah, so this, okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so this paper came out in September 2020. The video he's critiquing with this information came out in June of 2020. They wouldn't have had this information available available to them to make this topic, or to include in this topic. There, there would have been no way. So this, like, maybe now, if they had made this video, you know, after this came out, that video would have turned out very differently. We have no way of knowing. But they had no way of being able to incorporate this information. It's not like they maliciously left it out and ignored it. They just didn't have it. I'll double check, but let's see. Which video was this one? This one's the emissions video, right? What's the name of it? 
Does he show it? You know, how about I just look it up? Wait. No, 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 I'll just look it up. Who's responsible for climate change? Yep, June 21st, 2020. And the paper that he is now referring to came out in September of that year. They just didn't have the information available. They didn't just ignore it and leave it out on purpose. It didn't exist at the time. Or at least, not publicly. Maybe if they were funded more heavily by the Bill and, Gates Melinda, or the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they could have peered into the future and gotten a, gotten a hold of this paper before it went live. But yeah, when this video came out, they did not have it. That's why I, none of that information is there. They wouldn't have used it anyway since they always use the same source. Again, that's speculative though, which... Oh, you're not the guy that was just talking about speculative for the last couple of points. That is speculative. Maybe they wouldn't have used it, maybe they would. We have no way of knowing for sure. All I'm saying is this video came out before this. It's not like they didn't just leave this out. They didn't maliciously omit this information. It didn't exist. Maybe they wouldn't have used it. Couldn't tell you. No one can. ...role of the developed countries in climate change. According to a paper from Lancet, funded by no one, the U.S. is responsible not for 25% of emissions, but 40%. The EU is responsible for 29% instead of 22. G8 emitted 85% of historical CO2, and the Global North is accountable for 92% of excess carbon in the atmosphere. These numbers draw a much less equitable share of responsibility than Kurtz is at. As I was analyzing more and more videos, I actually discovered a plot I did not expect to find. In a couple of separate videos on climate change, Chris Isaac briefly mentions seemingly random selection of innovations. Or a new generation of nuclear power plants to new batteries, electronics and steel, low carbon production of cement, artificial meat, carbon capture, carbon capture, direct air capture and carbon capture. There doesn't seem to be any objective merit as to why I mention these in particular, but they do have in common two things. Bill Gates has invested millions into startups developing low carbon cement, steel, batteries, alternative meat, nuclear energy, and carbon capture. Wait, why is alternative meat thrown in here? Everyone is invested in alternative meat. It was one of the biggest fucking Silicon Valley investments for everyone. I have a fucking friend who invested in Impossible Foods back in like, Jesus Christ, like 2013. Like that's, I don't think that one's necessarily on the same level as the other shit where there's some kind of ulterior motive perhaps that you could digest. Everyone invested in alternative meat. Where was that headline? Eh, it doesn't matter. I guess I don't need to see the headline. Yes, the fuck it is. What is the ulterior motive of lab bro meat? <laughs> is Bill Gates putting microchips in our meat? I can see why talking about like the the all the all the other stuff, I can see why that would be something pertinent. I understand where that line of thinking is gonna go. But the lab grown meat, this is just something that legitimately everyone invested in that had money back in like 2012, 2013 when this became a huge fad. That's why they push vegan shit. Oh my god, who is in the chat right now? They push vegan shit because Bill Gates <laughs> invested in lab grown meat? What the fuck? What what are you talking what 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 are you Everyone that had money back in when this started popping off as investment opportunities put money into this. Not just Bill Gates. Like I said, I know a guy who fucking put money into this. These companies got so much investment, and I'll tell you one thing, the guy who put money into it is not smart enough to be putting any kind of fucking microchips in there. The ulterior motive there was make money, because this was going to be a huge thing. Also, I think lab-grown meat has a ton of potential. Like, as a concept, I actually think that shit is so hype. The current agricultural industry is so fucking bad for everything and everyone. I hope lab-grown meat pops off.
Why are you defending them so much? Feels like you're biased. It's crazy how I've already pointed out a couple things that I find very suspicious about the way they handle, such as, like, the sponsors and using one source that's also funded by their grant. And yet somehow, because now I'm not agreeing with every single thing, I'm just supporting. I hate this mentality. It's the same thing with any kind of, any kind of political opinion. If you're not 100% on that team, you must hate it. You're against them. Why can't people just take information and point out things that are wrong or right? Both. The Mummy is my favorite movie. I can point out a million fucking flaws. I still love that movie. You don't have to blindly support and digest and eat, consume everything and just assume it's all correct because you play for that team or you subscribe to that belief. You can call out and criticize things that don't make sense. It's not illegal. It's healthy. So there are a couple things this channel has done that has been pointed out, I didn't know, that I do find a bit odd and I don't think is handled correctly. But then there's a couple things this video is mentioning that are just wrong, such as the emissions thing. Their emissions video was made in June 20, June 21st of 2020. The paper that this video cites as the contradictory evidence that proves some of these numbers are, that are incorrect didn't come out until, uh, what the fuck was it? Uh, September of 2020. So the information wasn't there. They didn't just ignore it. It just wasn't fucking there. They couldn't predict the future. So it's a bad point. No matter how you spin it, it's a bad point. That information was not available to them. They couldn't have cited it. It's just that simple. They could have retracted. Maybe they maybe they should have. I'd have to rewatch this video. But if I recall correctly, the end of this video still does call out corporations and the countries as being the main culprits of emissions and the main drivers of the problems with the climate. So the overall message is still accurate regardless of the numbers, but maybe it is so egregious they should have retracted it. That's a fair argument. I could agree with you there. I'd have to rewatch it. Nuclear energy and carbon capture. And none of these technologies have proven to be commercially viable or scalable enough to make them count. The innovations lack robust scientific backing, and experts do not agree Recent relying thick. on them is a valid strategy. Many videos on topics that align with the interests of Curtis Act billionaire sponsors are frequently sprinkled with messaging about how investments and innovations will solve a problem or make the world a better place. By investing in these things right now, investment and aid and fair investment. Is investment in massive investment as investment pours in? It's obnoxious how often this happens. We invest in innovation that lead to innovation, the nature of innovation. And innovation, but innovation, the more time we give innovation and innovations like artificial meat. The standards for quality of <laughs> such- Artificial meat again. Again, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with just mentioning innovation if he's calling the action to invest in these things obviously that's a problem but uh, just mentioning things that are innovating in the fields to hopefully make it better is once again just optimism optimism does not just inherently equal propaganda because i mean jesus christ everything gets innovated ai technology came out of nowhere and it's changing the whole fucking game i don't think there's anything wrong with mentioning innovative things that are in that ballpark that you're talking about data is profoundly lowered in order to make these hidden injections work in the instance of carbon capture curses act pulled the numbers on cost straight from a gates funded magazine who took the number from a gates funded private carbon capture facility but that's the lowest estimate in reality, it could be as much as twice as expensive today, and still at least twice as expensive as trees are right now, than carbon capture is projected to be in the most optimistic estimates, which won't be real until at least the next decade. Rather than solving the climate crisis, many scientists argue such investments divert attention away from more impactful solutions and delay phasing out of modern industrial methods and fossil fuel dependence. Curtis Act doesn't tell you which technologies Bill Gates is invested in and how positive messaging about them is advancing his positions. But Curtis Act did take the effort mm -hmm. to mention exactly those technologies that Bill Gates and his billionaire friends are most invested in. There is a pattern that can explain why Curtis Act videos are like this. In many videos that coincide with Bill Gates' interests, they collaborate with our role in data or prioritize their content on these issues. 
In their video on do we need nuclear energy to stop climate change, Kurt Skazak prominently links to our world in data species on nuclear energy. This video is not sponsored by Gates, but the billionaire is betting heavily on his new generation of nuclear reactors. Kurt Skazak's source document links to our world in data 27 times, or about every third reference. Kurt Skazak made videos heavily criticizing- Which is organic. something I do think is lazy, at the very least. Even if not malicious, it's beyond lazy to only use one source for the information, especially when there's something like that. So I think that point is fair, and especially because that is just... I think that's just not a good look if you do receive money from the grant that also funds that. At the very least, use other sources to corroborate the information. I think that's a very clear, obvious thing. Even if not malicious, it's lazy. I don't know if it's malicious or they're just using that because it's convenient. But still, just use more than just that main source. Make food. This is another topic of major investment from Gates, who thinks industrialized agriculture with pesticides and GMOs is the best approach to solving world hunger, which it hasn't solved so far. In all four cases where Chris Zang draws verdict on organic food, our world in data is cited as reference. This video is also not sponsored by Gates. The most generous billionaire is one of the earliest backers of alternative meats, owning major positions oh man, this is coming in vegan like a big part and meat-free protein companies. Curtis Act has made a series of videos on meat, all with a strong verdict on how meat is bad for you and the environment. All of these videos were advised on by Hannah Ritchie, one of the key lieutenants at Our World in Data. During the production of at least one video, Richie was a business manager at a meat-free microprotein company. Whatever your take on meat is, these are conflicts of interest that should normally be disclosed by any serious research. But Chris Zach makes no effort to help you connect the dots. Chris I haven't, I don't think I've watched those videos from him. So I'll ask chat, I don't even know why I'm asking chat. Chat seems to be on one right now with like not, not even having watched the video. I. I can't imagine with the videos I watch that he he makes this video and it's not just like a look at what meat does to the body, which is something you can confirm with tons and tons and tons and tons of evidence. Like there's plenty of things you can say about meat or what the agriculture agriculture industry is currently doing to the world. Like there's plenty of evidence out there for that. And I can't imagine there's anything that he's saying that's like we need to invest in impossible meat at the moment, but maybe he does. Does he? Yeah, they didn't say meat is bad. They said the opposite. Okay. I know sometimes meat is not healthy, but we don't care. I've got some breaking news for you. Nutritional science is such a fickle and ever-changing thing. Whatever is accepted as truth last year is probably outdated by this year. I studied so much nutrition in college and fucking all of it's worthless now. The main takeaway is no one fully understands what effect the nutrition has on the human body. It, like it just, it is constantly evolving. There are some things that stay consistent, but on the whole, it's constantly changing. One thing that doesn't change though, is the current agricultural industry is just in a bad spot. Just in a genuinely bad spot. So I don't know what his video is on, like, meat. Is meat bad for you? I don't know what conclusions he draws there, but I imagine if he's talking about the meat industry, I imagine it is painted in a bad light because no matter how you spin it, the way that it's run right now is just a net bad thing for the planet, everyone, consumers. <laughs> wrong, you're funded by billionaires. You uh, Honestly, not wrong. I am on Twitch. That's Amazon-owned. And you're funded by billionaires. You're on Twitch. Aren't meats inflammatory while vegetables are def... What? Deflammatory? Oh, we don't need to get into the nutritional science and stuff, man. Everything's bad. To you. Everything's bad for you. Everything's terrible. <laughs> Hide in fear. Filter feed like SpongeBob. Uh, you know what? Actually, hold on. I bet right now you could look up tons of articles on why broccoli is actually terrible for you. I did this one time. I don't even remember why. I think I had to do something on it in college, but I was looking up like why broccoli could be bad for you. It's apparently a carcinogen, which I would have never guessed. Let's see. All right. 
Broccoli sprouts are inducers of carcinogen. Jesus Christ. Oh, and here's... Wait, this one's completely saying the opposite. Yep. That's the fucking problem with <laughs> nutritional science, man. It is... You can find a thousand things saying one thing and a thousand things saying the exact opposite. So there's a lot here about, like, broccoli and how it can actually help fight cancer, like, be good against it. And then I can also find here it being a carcinogen. Well, not I guess it's not just broccoli. This is talking about which vegetables are carcinogen-like, I guess. So it's not just targeting broccoli. Broccoli loaded with formaldehyde, natural product of oxidation, which is known to cause cancer. Let's reset exactly where. Source, this one's uh, Thinking Nutrition AU. That's the one about broccoli loaded with formaldehyde, known to cause cancer. Who wrote that? Timmy Turner? I <laughs> have no fucking clue. <laughs> the point I was making is nutritional science is so fucking volatile. Versus Act is terrible at disclosing their sponsors. I didn't Agreed. call of my audience to see when they think channels should disclaim sponsorship. Most people would prefer... Completely agree with that point. ...before the video starts or during intro. Curses Act never reveals their sponsors until the very end of their videos. Some sponsors were declared in the last few seconds of the video, some were only mentioned in the text on screen. And in at least one instance, the only disclaimer of sponsorship was in the description. This is a low <laughs> bar even for YouTube. Plenty of good educational creators disclose their sponsors up front. Why should Kirk's ad be given a pass? Most people who do not watch videos till the very last second or who cannot read everything that's on the screen would never be aware of the extent to which Kirk's ad videos are sponsored by billionaires. Kirk's ad also does a terrible job at explaining who their sponsors actually are. This video is part of a series about climate change supported by Breakthrough Energy. In their climate change video sponsored by Breakthrough Energy, you're told it is just a coalition founded by Bill Gates that's working to expand clean energy investment and support the innovations that will lead the world to net zero carbon emissions. But they don't tell you that Breakthrough Energy is a bunch of venture capitalist funds where billionaires stand to make huge profits from adoption of technologies they invest their billions into. Kurtz Gesagt left a link. Does that necessarily mean that it's not fighting for that goal, though? Everything's profit driven. Literally everything. Legitimately fucking everything. But are they not actually what he claims they are? Because that would be a big problem. That's I don't think that's a very strong point. In the description that leads to Gates' book sale, but not the fund's official website. YouTube has a policy that flags channels funded by governments with a label that informs viewers of this financial conflict. This was enacted with the aim of combating government misinformation on the platform. You can see this on Curses Act German channel that is backed by the government and YouTube labels it as a German PBS. This same standard should be applied to private funding too. There should be a label that cannot be arbitrarily set or removed by the creator that this closes up front who is funding their videos. Media consolidation is a major threat to diversity of views and billionaires, including the ones funding Curses Act, are the main driver behind this trend. I do wonder, and maybe I'll have to go back and watch, if he did disclose at the very beginning or had that label that this channel's talking about, would that change the perception of the information? Because once again, every time I've watched one of their pieces of content, I've never really felt like it was trying to skew me in like investment in the lab grown meat or anything, even if it was just talking about it and like, you know, it could be beneficial in the future. I've never really got the impression that I was ever there to really necessarily promote something more so just talk about everything around the topic. So I wonder if that was at the beginning, if the perception would change, like it feels like an ad. Interesting. Yeah, people hate Gates. Setting aside Bill Gates, let's assume it was anything, literally anything that seemed like it could be a conflict. I just wonder if that would even change the information. If the video stayed exactly the same, but at the, at the beginning it was mentioned like, hey, this was partially funded by X. Does that change how I perceive the information? Will I now feel like I'm getting more of an ad as opposed to like education on a topic? 
I'd have to go back and watch on those. That's for me. Yeah, maybe it'll be on an individual basis. For example, if I watched the video on lab-grown meat, right, and that video was sponsored by Impossible, I'm going to take a lot of the information with a big grain of salt. It's like, okay, clearly they're not going to touch on anything that might be a little less than savory with lab-grown meat. For example, one thing I read about recently with, I think it's Beyond, or it might be Impossible, one of the things they use in there to get it to look more like meat where it can bleed is actually pretty bad for you. So some of the, some of the like, uh, meat substitutes aren't like amazing for you they're not significantly better than just having red meat in terms of like health benefits but i feel like if that video was funded by impossible they're not going to mention that that dye or i don't think it's a dye i don't remember what it is they're not going to mention that that agent in there isn't actually the best so it'd no longer be more of a educational take on it it'd feel more like promoting the the brand so I guess it would truly depend on what the subject is and who's sponsoring it. They don't just use food coloring? You know, why don't I just look it up? I think it was impossible. The ingredient is referred to as genetically engineered heme soy leg hemoglobin. It's the color additive Impossible Foods uses to make its plant-based burger appear to bleed as if it were beef. And that thing is not good for you. In fact, they are currently in a lawsuit that challenges the FDA approval of that additive. Here. So to, to tie it back to this, if that channel made a video on, uh, you know meat substitutes and they're talking about impossible they probably won't mention this though i do think it's something important to mention soy is not bad for you fucking idiots soy itself isn't bad for you this is what they're arguing is not good for you but yeah soy is not gonna kill you but this is apparently not good for you, which is why it's become kind of controversial. It is not enough to promise editorial independence because there are multiple ways sponsors can influence content behind the scenes. Kurtz Gesagt maintains their sponsors never Look at their response to this video. But oh, they practice, responded? I'd like to see their point, or their stance on all of it as well. So yeah, I'll do that after this. Or scientists directly on their sponsors' payroll. Thanks to Tim Gisip's grades, I appreciate Kurtz that, man. The two videos Gesagt made with Max Roser were sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But Max Roser's mm -hmm. Our World in Data received almost $5 million from Bill Gates, so what is exactly the degree of separation here? In the video on vaccine side effects, Kurtz Gesagt lists six experts they consulted with at least four of which are from Gates-funded institutions, and one scientist is an executive at the Gates Foundation. How is that not a sponsor commenting on their script? In three videos, Kurt Zag made for- See, like, when he makes a point like that, I, I am inclined to agree. At the very least, I don't doubt the experts. I'd be a fool to do that. But why wouldn't you go to something that's so far removed from your sponsor, you couldn't possibly make an argument that it was influenced by it? That is just a big conflict of interest, and it shouldn't be hard to do. That just kind of, it seems like it just kind of boils down to laziness. Or, I guess, as this thing, uh, as this video argues, propaganda. I guess it really could be either one, in, in a case like that. Always doubt the experts. Jesus Christ, we have regressed so much. There are plenty of things, <laughs> there are plenty of experts worth doubting, but on the whole, I think you should probably trust the people that are more knowledgeable on a topic that you failed in high school. At least hear them out first before going to Facebook to get your truthful information. For the Templeton World Charity, at least four out of six scientists have received direct funding for the research from Templeton. In the Kurtzad video on long-termism, The Last Human, sponsored by Open Philanthropy, two out of three scientists are from the Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute, the institute which received at least 
15 million pounds from open philanthropy. The one the LMU Munich scientist was also at Oxford during the Open Philanthropy Grant. There is no disclaimer of any of these associations anywhere in Kurt's Kazakh materials. Another long-term video, the one on the civilizational collapse, was sponsored and researched by William McCaskill. Seemingly a random professor from Oxford University, McCaskill is behind the Center of Effective Altruism and a number of other charities that have received funding from Open Philanthropy and some have funded our world in data. Nothing about this relationship is ever disclosed in Kurtz's at source materials. Open philanthropy has given- Does it need to be though? I haven't- I don't think I've seen that video. Would it being disclosed change the information? Was he presenting opinion pieces or just facts about the subject? Because that feels like it'd be something weird to disclose in the video, though I guess he could have done due diligence and talked about it in the description if it seems like it would have been a conflict. Even Kurtz has had more than 5 million euros to expand the channel into foreign languages and to promote long-termist philosophy and effective altruism in their videos. Do you think money doesn't buy influence? So billionaires do political lobbying and campaign financing for the lols and they don't get any laws influenced in their favor? Do billionaires buy Here's newspapers and donate to media companies? I keep seeing this perspective. Always trust greedy billionaires in the government. No one is fucking saying that, man. To boil down this, the people that you're getting your information from are also financially benefiting from it. Let's say I all of a sudden completely pivot and I'm preaching... Uh, let me think of like a more topical example. I'm preaching about Pfizer turning, into a, turning you into a fucking shaky skeleton. Me preaching that to you and you subbing to me is giving me financial incentive to continue saying that. I'm playing into you and you are paying me for it. The same thing as if you were just paying a greedy corporation. Now you're just paying me as I'm feeding you this information. It's financial incentives all the way down the line, bro. What you need to do is look at all sides of everything and then you form your own conclusions and you form your own stance on it as opposed to blindly following one camp or the other. That's how it should work. No matter who you're going to, you are financially benefiting them. Even if you don't give me money, you being here gives me money if I run an ad. So I have financial incentive to continue to feed you that shit to keep you coming back. So look at all the camps and you form your own fucking opinion instead of blindly following one or the other. It's just that simple. It is, it is super easy. That's how it should work. Instead of just like going to this fucking tribalism. Like that's just, I, it's so dumb. Thanks to the gift sub preview and the resub good in Dan. Oh, hey, Dan. In the prime window. Companies to support independent journalism. Think of what happened to the COVID-19 vaccine developed by the University of Oxford. Researchers originally planned to release their vaccine patent for free so that third world countries could manufacture their doses faster instead of waiting for the rich countries to donate the vaccines to them. Until Bill Gates stepped in and forced the university to partner with a manufacturer and not release their patents. Against the pleas of the WHO and the developing world that patents would stifle vaccine access, Gates used his $750 million leverage to change a university's course. And he did this to protect the interests of big pharmaceutical companies he has been investing in for decades, which resulted in the global vaccine apartheid and possibly millions of preventable deaths. Money buys influence. It buys it in politics, it buys it in science, it gets you favorable coverage in the media. Gates poured 300 Favorable million coverage in the media. media? This guy companies. gets shit on all the time. Kurtzak being one of them. Ask yourself, Bill Gates is a terrible example for that. you read a critical piece on Gates or his foundation? Today, yesterday, to the day before, they everywhere. To decouple the interests of their funding source from the content in their videos. Does this mean that we'll soon get to see a cutely animated character of Bill Gates meeting up with Jeffrey Epstein at his private venues after he was convicted sex trafficker? Science is. This has gone really off the rails from targeting the channel when big itself. Money buys big influence, this is things people have talked about a lot already. If we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, it becomes less diverse, more stringent, 
and more authoritative. Then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political or religious, who comes ambling along. In the academic community, there is a phenomenon called the chilling effect. It occurs when scientists self-censor or refuse to speak out against the funding source of their institutions out of fear of losing support or getting sacked. With the Gates Foundation, they refer to it as the bill chill. Gates' funding priorities have worried scientists for stifling diversity of views for decades. His philanthropic funding made it difficult to find independent reviewers. Through his multi-billion dollar empire of donations and investments, Gates amassed enough power to single-handedly influence toxic. policies of global and national governing bodies. When Gates Foundation pours money into a project, they end up having enough power to veto public policies that don't align with their charity's priorities. Then in every other giant fucking lobbyist, wh why are we no longer talking about the YouTube channel that this video is supposed to be focusing on? Why are we going into the Bill Gates stuff? That is completely irrelevant to the channel that we're talking about. We've completely lost the plot in this now. Because he's a conspiracy nut. I don't know the channel, I couldn't tell you. All the way up until here, I don't think it, there were a lot of reaches, but I don't think it was necessarily conspiratorial or anything like that. I, I don't know why he's going off on this tangent when it doesn't play any role at all in the actual subject matter. I would like to see their response. I think there are a couple of decent points that I think are absolutely 100% on the, on the nose. It should absolutely be more clear when a video is at least partially funded by a, a fund, a grant, or a sp sponsor is the wrong word because it's not like technically a sponsor. But falling in a gray area isn't a good look either. It should be disclosed, video description, and the beginning of the video, which is the common, accepted, and I'm pretty sure like the only legal way of disclosing sponsorship when it comes to YouTube videos. Otherwise, you're in an, you're in an actual violation. So it is shady that it's only the last 10, 15, 20 seconds of the video that he mentions that. I think that is a actual very important thing to call out. Because again, like a lot of people mentioned, seeing that kind of stuff makes you kind of question the motive. So you need to be upfront about it. And then it's, it's obviously going to be up to the individuals on whether or not that skews the data or changes their perspective on the information. But I think it's important to be transparent. And then the other thing that he made a good point on is the fact that they keep using the exact same uh, aggregator for their sources, the R World, which is also funded by their grant. That is pure laziness and at best and at worst trying to paint everything in a more positive light for their grant, the people that controlled their money. They should have used more than just that source so many times. And they do use other sources, but that is by far their biggest one, at least from everything we've seen here. Where is their response video to it? I wish we could talk without worrying about ban and cancels in a country with free speech as a constitutional right given by God. Are you taking your medicine? What are you talking about? You can go on Twitter right now and say the most unhinged shit imaginable and find a whole audience based on it. How many people do you know have been thrown in jail in your life for being edgy or saying weird shit or talking about something too controversial? The only one I can think of is Alex Jones, but he, even he wasn't thrown in jail, but he did get fucking dumped by all his banks and everything because he kept talking about Sandy Hook being a fucking fraud. Andrew Tate still has his Twitter account. He still runs his massive Discord server. In Romania, he's getting fucked with the human trafficking charges. Whether or not those are true, we have no idea yet. I guess we'll see how it all plays out. But he is totally fine. He is posting on Twitter right fucking now. He has he is still making money, too. He's doing totally fine. Now, you could talk about, like, the people canceling him and attacking him. But everyone gets canceled and attacked. Literally everybody. And you only get canceled if you let yourself get canceled. Fucking Logan Paul had every mainstream news outlet talking about him being a scammer. Every YouTuber, myself included, talking about his scam. And you know what is happening right now with Logan Paul? His dick is getting sucked all over the place. Because he had a good WrestleMania, or a good um, WWE Rumble last night. You only get canceled if you let yourself get canceled. He put his head down and just ignored it. He gave one apology. Well... One real apology and then one complete missed the mark. And then he went right back to the WWE and won over everyone's favor because he did a cool thing at WrestleMania. So I don't know what you're talking about.
Oh, this is the link to their response. Very right, cool. Thank you. So this is them disputing the claim that most of their investment comes from the grant as well as the VCs and such, citing that 65% comes from the shop, ad revenue, and Patreon. So they are still independent, not primarily funded by VCs. So organizational sponsors like Gates Foundation and Open Philanthropy represent 13%. The fact that you're saying sponsor in this, though, means that you should play by sponsor rules. And instead of just relegating that to the last 20 seconds, it needs to be in the front of the video and in the description. That is how it's always been done. That's how it should be done. I think that's still a very fair critique. You're even calling them a sponsor here. So this is now talking about the Open Philanthropy one, and they're claiming that it was only used for translating videos and creating for TikTok, which I think makes a lot of sense. I imagine they would go to something like that to translate all the videos to branch out into the like big, uh, big platforms like TikTok and reach a wider audience from different languages. It includes two sponsored videos. And it represents a small amount of their revenue. I think this is a fair point, but this is something that a lot of, like, video game journalists always rely on. For example, like, when you get a review copy of a game from a developer you have a good relationship with, you're less likely to give it a harsh review because you don't want to burn that bridge. Right? So that's why people view it as a conflict of interest. If you're being sponsored, at least in part, by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the topic you're talking about kind of touches on some things they're involved in, you're less likely to be critical of it. That's why people view it more as, like, a conflict thing. Which is why it should be disclosed earlier on that this is in part funded by some of that money. Now, of course, I'm not saying they are. I have no way of knowing if they are. But that's why it's perceived that way. I still think this is a fair point. I understand that it's probably, and in fact, I know it is a pretty good source. And I know it's an aggregator for a lot of information. But at the very least, I still think for this scale, they should be using multiple sources for these things instead of just relying on the same one. Especially because, as they mention, it is at least receiving funding from the same foundation that they have as well. So at the very least, just for the sake of optics, why not use other sources to corroborate the data? It shouldn't be that hard. I imagine there's plenty of other equally reliable sources for a lot of the topics they want to cover. Are they in trouble? It depends. For a lot of people, this ruins their ability to take the channel seriously and, like, believe everything they're being told by the channel. And for others, it's viewed as a nothing burger, where it's like, well, this just kind of means, like, they're, they're, this, this whole video was just a hit piece where optimism equal propaganda. And I'm not saying either side's right or wrong here. 
because it is kind of an interesting situation. I think the video made some good points, but then some bad ones, like some, like way off ones. Oh, here, they're even talking about using others. So then just also cite that. I feel like there's nothing wrong with citing that as well, in addition to these, so that way it doesn't look like it's just all coming from our world. Also, just cite from your independent fact checkers and their sources. And you immediately tackle the problem. If you're already doing more than just using this, then cite them as well. I feel like that's only fair to them, too. They do cite it? Where? I even went into the... Uh, which one was it? This one? And it's all our world. So why not just also drop them? One video. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess we'll go to another one, but even still. I'm assuming they also use their fact checkers for that one, right? Well, why not just cite them there? First link. You missed it. First link of what? Is this of the video I was just on? Since well, no, no, this this is where that guy got all the our world, our world, and here's two others. But our world is the one that pops up so often, which is what that the whole video was talking about. I think this is the one where there's 81 cited sources and 27 are our world. So why not just also include the other ones that corroborated this data? Is what I'm saying. Why why are we why are we not talking about that? Because it's a good source. I get that. But it, you're not understanding. It, the, as they also admit, it is partially funded by the Gates Foundation, which they also receive funding from. So why not, for the full sake of, like, everything being, you know, honky-dory, also confirm it with their fact-checkers that I'm assuming they already used to do that. And then just cite that here as well, as an additional source. It's a good source, why would they go to a less funded source? Because they are receiving funding from the same source. It is a bad look. If I am making a video about impossible meat and it being great, why am I going to only use impossible meat to corroborate my data? It would look bad. Which is what this whole fucking thing stemmed from. And it could have been avoided if they also just cited their fact checkers instead of only using our world for these, these certain instances. I get they use other sources, but when a third of it comes from the same source that is also funded by your sponsor, it looks bad. What are we not understanding? This is what it all boiled down to. They agree like a paragraph down. I haven't even finished, but they, they are literally agreeing <laughs> from everything I've seen here. But they're also giving very clear, uh, very clear evidence that they are not primarily funded by these foundations, these organizations. They're not primarily sponsor funded. They are independent, which immediately blasts home the idea that they are a propaganda machine when their financial incentives don't make sense. If only 4% of their revenue comes from these organizations, why the fuck would they bend the knee to them as opposed to the people that actually fund them? And here, right here, you're right. Even agreeing with that. It's like, it's just a matter of being a little more open with it. Instead of jumping to this extreme, it could have been this one. Literally what I am fucking saying. Holy shit. Very interesting, though. They are literally not propaganda, though. Yeah, this video didn't make any convincing arguments or compelling arguments to convince me that they're a propaganda machine. But it did point out things that I do think they have done improperly. Nothing that I think ruins the channel for me or anything, but definitely some things that I think they should work on. What would they be prop... Again, I don't... Just, why am I going to explain it for the fifth fucking time? <laughs> At this point, just watch it yourself. <laughs> Christ. I have summarized it like fucking 15 times at this point. The guy made the video for clout. I don't know the channel. I, I don't know anything about the channel. 
I think the video could have been made from a place of, like, genuine concern for the truthfulness of information, but then lost the plot halfway through and started to immediately jump to the conclusion that it must all be propaganda because some things were a little improperly handled. Again, I think one of the big glaring things is he mentions the carbon emissions video and he literally, he cites a source that didn't exist when the video was made. That is not a fair critique. That's not a fair point. That is just a wrong point. You can't critique a video for something that didn't exist when it was made. Like, again, there, there were things in that video that I think were way off mark, but then also he did make a, a couple, I think, very good points about how this channel should be improved in regards to its transparency, especially with its sponsors and their sources. It's, it really boils down mainly to that so far, at least for me. Maybe you might feel differently. But to me, it just highlighted that this channel needs to be more transparent when it is funded at least partially by an organization and also making it seem like they're less reliant on just one source for the majority of their information. I think this was a very insightful conversation, if nothing else. This was a very interesting topic all around. And it, I think this was probably not the right channel to target, but there are actual channels that are propaganda machines. Plenty. So I think it does highlight, like, an issue, albeit a bit incorrectly, with the one that it chose. I think it's an interesting topic.